Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. A couple of announcements. Today at 2 p.m., St. Paul Lutheran School Christmas program is here at the church, followed by the annual cookie walk in the church basement. Um, also, everyone is invited to go Christmas caroling next Sunday, December 19th. Meet here at the church at 3 p.m. Soup and refreshments will be here following the caroling at the church. Uh, the church office will be closed Monday and Tuesday this week. Joyce will be out of the office, office both days. Um, Pastor will not be in the office on Monday, uh, but I will be here for the 7th and 8th grade confirmation classes. Um, that's all the announcements I have, so we'll continue our service by singing our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is from Zephaniah uh, chapter 3. Sing, daughter of Zion, shout aloud, Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will, he, will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the people of the earth when I restore your fortune before your very eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The disciples of John reported all these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one to whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with baptism of John, but the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. 
For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drinker, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is justified by all her children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and I now invite the children to come forward for the children's message. How nice it is to see all of you today. Good day today? Yeah, good. You know what this thing here is? You know what it's called? It's an advent wreath, right? Advent wreath, yeah. And look at all the candles on there, huh? We use those candles to uh, remind us of the days of advent from the first beginning of Advent to the end of Advent, that means the coming of Jesus. When Jesus will come, we're ready. It, it helps us to prepare to celebrate the time when he first came, born a baby in a manger. You know that story, right? Um, Jesus coming to us in, uh, in a manger. And, and those candles are, all, are, are a little bit different, aren't they? There's a couple of blue ones up there, a white one, and then there's that pink one up there. And those candles all have actually names and purposes, okay? Um, the first candle that we light is actually a blue one. It is uh, called the, the prophecy candle, and, and it represents hope because the prophets proclaimed Jesus coming, and that gave people hope for the coming of, of the Savior. And then the second candle is called the Bethlehem candle. That represents um, Jesus' manger and, and the, the love that God has, has for us and that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will have eternal life, right? For God so loved the world. Um, and then there's the third candle. We light that on the third Sunday of Advent. That's today. Um, and, and that candle is a little different, isn't it? It's pink or rose, depending on what you want to call it. Um, I guess the technical color is called rose, but um, it's pink. Um, the third Sunday of Advent has also got another name. It's kind of a funny sounding name. It's called Gaudete Sunday. That means to rejoice. Um, this candle is the shepherd's candle. Um, and it's called the shepherd's candle because it reminds us to rejoice. Remember, the shepherds heard the good news of great joy, right? And when they heard that great news, they rejoiced. They were happy, right? And they celebrated the coming of the new Savior. Um, that pink candle 
reminds us of that time when um, we rejoice over the coming of Christ. And it's also a different color because the, the different color reminds us that it's the, the middle of Advent. See, there's, there's two candles lit already for the last two Sundays, and then there's this one in the middle, and then there's one more to go for another Sunday, so there's two weeks to go before we light that center one which is the white candle, that's called the Christ candle. And that reminds us that Jesus was born and he is the light of the world, who lights, sheds on, shines on our hearts the light of his word, so that we might always know the truth about who Jesus is and all the great stuff that he did for us, so that we can remember that pink candle again and rejoice along with the shepherds who also heard that good news, right? Um, and that's, that's how the Advent wreath works. Uh, that's what we use it for, and it reminds us of all those good things, not only of the coming that Jesus came one time, born in a manger, but that he will come again. And we can continue to rejoice along with that pink candle and be happy as he comes to bring us home with him in heaven someday. How about that? Sounds good, doesn't it? You betcha. I got some gifts for you, as always. And you can then uh, go about wherever it is you're going. And thanks for coming up here. You can go back now. Thank you. I know, I know, you want to stay longer, right? You come up here and sit with me. You gonna help me preach the sermon? <laughs> here we go. Would you like some? It's okay. Here you go. It's okay. Good to see you. <laughs> here you go. All right, there you go. We continue with the hymn. <laughs> Christ. Amen. A text for this morning is from 
the epistle reading, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. I remember when, when I was a kid at, back in Milwaukee, uh, our home church was a couple blocks away. Um, the ladies in the altar guild would always make the advent wreath they made a new one every year from the branches that were cut off the bottom of the Christmas trees that were set up and it was kind of similar to here where we have two but oh those Christmas trees this church was huge <laughs> and those trees were big and I, I want to say they were like 12 feet high but you know maybe they were higher and lower I, I can't remember I was little so Maybe they looked bigger than they were, I don't know. But they were big. And, and the Advent wreath was big, and it looked pretty cool with all those real pine branches in there, you know, those evergreen branches. And, uh, of course, we don't get to use real stuff anymore these days. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be safer that way, but, but still it reminds us um, that life continues even in the dead of winter. Uh, that's also part of the Christmas tree tradition, you know, the, the fact that we have that evergreen tree uh, that reminds us that life continues uh, and that life will continue, especially in Christ our Lord. Ancient people also saw this. Um, there's evidence of pre-Christian Germanic peoples using wreaths with lit candles um, during the cold and dark nights of December as a sign of hope in the future um, for warmth and for the extended sunlit days of spring. Uh, in Scandinavia also during winter they used lighted candles that were placed on a wheel um, and prayers were offered to the God of light to turn the wheel of the earth back towards the sun so that um, the days would be longer and, and, and warmer, of course. By the Middle Ages, the Christians had adopted this tradition of the Advent wreath. Uh, they called it Advent wreath, as with the season of Advent um, during this time, and it was part of um, their spiritual preparation for Christmas. Uh, considering that we light these candles each time, remembering that Christ is the light that came into the world to dispel the darkness of all our sin and to radiate the light of the truth of God and the love of God into our hearts. Uh, by 1600, both the Catholics and the Lutherans had more formal practices revolving around the Advent wreath. We light each candle as the weeks progress, Advent means, of course, the arrival, and so we use it to mark the days until the arrival of the high festival of the first coming uh, in the birth of Jesus Christ. We look at the Advent wreath and we see the, the three, well, we have blue candles. Um, formerly they were purple, but they changed the color from Advent to, from purple to blue. Um, I, I never did figure that one out, but... Uh, <laughs> But anyway, we have blue, and, um, and then, of course, there's always that, that one candle that's, uh, that's pink. And everybody always asks about that pink candle. That pink candle is the third Sunday of Advent, which is today. Um, we light the pink candle, and does anyone know why? Well, it's because of our text, Philippians 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The uh, propers of the day, that is all those parts of the liturgy that change depending on the day or season of the year, um, is, uh, that passage is used, for example, uh, the antiphon or beginning and ending verses of the intro of the day uh, or the psalm of the day um, rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice it has been that 
uh, reading for, for just about ever since Christ came. Um, and uh, so it's kind of a day of rejoicing then. Um, the Bible passage is also read as one of the, the readings for the day, as which is, of course, also part of the proffers of the day. Um, Advent is not really a festival, um, but is actually a preparation period leading up to the festival uh, of Christmas, the, the birth of Christ. The, the, the festival is 12 days, actually, 12 days of Christmas. Um, of course, now many people are singing Christmas carols of, uh, already, um, but we're still here singing those songs of Advent, for example, Savior of the nations, come, hark, a thrilling voice is sounding, lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, O come, O come, Emmanuel, because we need this Advent season. Um, we can't let it get lost in all the shopping and decorating that goes on at this time of the year. There, there's so much spiritual importance here in this preparation time um, as we go along before there is the celebrating. After all, if we consider even in the Bible how God has 39 books in the Old Testament pointing towards uh, the coming of the new, the new of the Savior, the 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 preparation, preparing us for the arrival of the Messiah, the Christ child, and only 27 books after that describing about uh, uh, what happened and, and all that continues to go on. The third Sunday marks the halfway point in Advent. Um, we mentioned that also to the children here, two weeks behind, two weeks to go, um, give or take a couple of days, that is, until Christmas. So we're about halfway through the season now. Um, we used to use the one-year lectionary, um, and that was, uh, we had one reading for, or a set of readings for each day of the year. Um, that uh, lectionary is a, um, an arrangement of Bible passages that we used to to mark the, the season or the day, to present the theme of the day. Um, and these were used then um, every year. So the, the third Sunday of Advent, the reading was the same every year. Um, we've since gone to a three-year lectionary, and they're given, uh, we repeat the cycle every three years, uh, but, but still there is always that passage of rejoicing on the third Sunday of Advent. Uh, because we rejoice um, as we do, as Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, um, to rejoice because there is so much for us as Christians to rejoice about in the church um, during this Advent season. We rejoice in the coming of the Savior who came born in the manger. We rejoice along with the shepherds who received that message for the very first time of the Savior born in Bethlehem. We rejoice as we continue to hear that same message. We rejoice as we continue to hear that message over and over and over throughout uh, our lives of the Christ who came to save us from our sins that we might have everlasting life. So we need this set season of Advent. We can't let it get lost. So um, here we are then in this third Sunday again, um, rejoicing because there is so much to rejoice about. Now, while there are many people who are not so happy during this time of the year, they don't find much to rejoice about, and I guess if we really thought about it, we could look out into our world and say, well, there's still fighting going on around the world. It's even in our own country, we're, we're, we're still burdened with all those uh, effects of COVID-19. And, uh, and in fact, even an upswing in, in, in the number of cases and so forth. And um, our loved ones are dying and, and, and loved ones have died. People are, are, are just losing hope in the world. But we as Christians should remember that this is how the world has always been since the fall of humankind. Students of the Bible should know and remember 
how empire after empire conquered the known world through bloodshed. The Egyptians, the Syrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Macedonians, the Romans. Paul, when he wrote this letter to the, Thess or to the Philippians, um, lived under the tyrannical di dictatorship of Caesar Nero, who was famous for his brutal treatment of Christians. How does Paul speak about all this to the people? Does he, does he speak all gloom and doom to them? Boy, it's really a, going to be a terrible time to be a Christian, isn't it? Um, did you hear how Nero blamed us for uh, Rome burning down last year? He, how he hung Christians from poles and lit them on fire and others tied in lamb skins and threw them out to the wild dogs? And Being a Christian is just about the worst thing there is, he, would have to, he might say. But no, we didn't hear any of that from Paul. Paul's right reading says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, rejoice. Yeah, I know the, the world is a mess. The world has morality up for grabs. Our children are growing up in a world that um, has more challenges to the Christian faith than we ever had. Uh, there's violence all around us. The world is a tough place to live in. It's full of sin. And, and that's why God said way back in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, by the sweat of your brow shall you eat bread until you return to the ground out of which you were taken. But Paul encourages us to rejoice even in the midst of all of that. That's because he knows that Jesus is coming again. And his advent, or his coming, is near. Therefore, we shall rejoice, even in the midst of all this stuff. We shall continue our preparations for the coming of Jesus Christ, for the coming of, his, and of the celebration of his first coming, which was for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the coming of him when he comes again to welcome us into his kingdom forever. And so we are here then preparing and rejoicing. Well, how do we do that? How do we prepare? Well, first of all, be on guard. Because um, the devil likes to sneak around. Um, have you ever heard of that, the fishing? They call it um, P-F-I-S-H-I-N-G. It, it, it has to do with the... Uh, internet scams um, where someone might say like uh, you might get an email uh, saying something like oh, I, I've been driven out of my country or the, uh, the evil government is taking over our country and I'm, I, I, I'm a rich man and I have all this money in the bank and I'm going to lose it um, if you just give me your bank account number I'll put it all in your account and make you rich and, uh, and then you can give back to me and I'll leave a quite a lot in, to, in there for you um, and, and they'll tell you it's all legal and, and many people have fallen for this uh, unfortunately um, but remember he's playing on your greed the devil works like that he plays on our weaknesses he plays on our greed our need for immediate comfort our laziness, our pride and all those kinds of things. And then he lays a trap for us. Watch out for him. Stay awake. Examine yourself each day. Confess your sins. Call upon Christ for the forgiveness that only he can give. For only he took your sins upon himself, offering himself up as a perfect sacrifice, a sacrifice that none of us could make. Only he declares you not guilty before the Father in heaven. The second is to rejoice. Again, that passage, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say to rejoice. Don't go around living 
all gloomy and doomy. We get so caught up in all the bad things and how bad things are in this world. Sure, there's wars and rumors of wars, as the Bible tells us. Family member against family member, natural disasters. We heard about those terrible tornadoes that uh, yesterday um, in the mid south, and then uh, the economy is not that great. To, but everything's not all that bad, is it? I even think that John the Baptist fell for this one, sending his disciples to Jesus, as we heard in our gospel reading, and asking, are you really the Messiah, or did I just think you were when, when we went through all that, that baptism stuff in the river? And now I'm here in prison, and I'm going to die, and you're out there, and it seems you're not doing anything for me. It's going to happen that we will all doubt God's plan sometime in our life. He had, John had other expectations of Jesus. Um, don't be concerned about how bad life is. After all, what, what is it that you really expect? Do you expect heaven on earth? Uh, that's not going to happen. It's not going to come until he comes again. Uh, and this place is a cursed place. This is the world where sin exists and, and we're blessed just to make it through every day. Instead, we need to look ahead to what's going to happen when we leave this world, for what God blessings, what blessings God has given to us already. Um, God has a great place prepared for you in heaven right now. Jesus said, He's going ahead of you to prepare that wonderful place for you. And upon your arrival, all your loved ones will be there welcoming you in through the front door. Just rejoice in that picture. Um, remember that pink candle every day and thank the Lord for all the blessings that he has given you this day and every day. Um, and in fact, for the one that he has given to you for eternal life. If we spent half as much time praying to God about the things that trouble us as we do about worrying and complaining about them, we'd probably spend more time in prayer than all the pastors in all the churches in all the world combined. We've got this great opportunity whenever we feel overwhelmed. All we have to do is remember who's in control here. It's not us. The Lord is at hand. That means the person we're praying to this morning is omnipotent. He's almighty. God created this world. Don't you think that he knows what's going on in it? Don't you think that he knows what's happening in your life? He sees what troubles you. He knows what you've gone through. He's been here going through these things. Maybe he just wants you to trust him. To experience suffering so you can encourage someone else in their suffering, to find a solution to help others who are in need of help. Or maybe it's just simply to get you to spend more time in praying to him and depending on him to answering your prayers. God has his reasons. He may not be telling you, but he has his reasons. Um, and and they, you can be assured they are good reasons to bring about blessings for you so that we might rejoice in all that he has given to us. One of the great passages of the Bible that, um, that I always remember and, and brings great comfort to me is to know, um, as it says in Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Dear Christians, you can be still because you know more than the fact that he is God. You know that he is God who came from heaven down to earth to become a human being, to take your sins upon himself, to die for those sins, for the forgiveness of those sins, to take them all away from you, and to give to you his perfect righteousness. And that's our true reason for rejoicing. That brings us true comfort in all things. And then one more thing. Paul ends this section with a blessing. Um, he talks about all this stuff and then gives us a blessing. For centuries, Lutheran pastors have used this sentence or maybe even 
similar sentences um, as, uh, as this one. In, in fact, I, I always remember hearing it also at the end of every sermon, um, that I, and, and I knew that it was the end of the sermon when I heard it, um, and that uh, pretty soon the plate would be coming by, put my money into that plate, and, uh, and continue passing it on down. And it's when I heard those words, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Pastors say that at the end, because they want you to remember that you've just heard the word of God, and you can rest peacefully in that word of God, for you have heard what was said. Your heart will trust in Jesus Christ, and you will never have to worry about anything. You can go about your life, your work, your sufferings, your trials, knowing one thing, Jesus goes with you. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say, rejoice. For in less than two weeks we'll gather here again to celebrate the birth of Jesus. When God became one of us to bring us back to himself, we will rejoice and open up our hearts to that peace that he gives to us on that day. And we will rejoice knowing that he will come again to take us to be with him. Because the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding which we already said <laughs> bless you and keep you we continue now by uh, bringing our offering forward We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Heavenly Father, you rescued the daughter of Zion from her enemies and take away the judgments against her. Look with compassion upon your people wherever they suffer from the name of Jesus. Give them wisdom when they are pressured to compromise. Provide when they suffer loss. Give courage when they are afraid and strengthen them in the midst of persecution until you deliver them. Preserve them always in the joyful hope that you will restore all that is lost with what cannot be taken away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as you once sent messengers before the face of Jesus to prepare his way, so strengthen and encourage all pastors and church workers as they make known his saving name. Be with and bless all who serve you according to your word all missionaries, all pastors, all um, uh, health care workers, all, all policemen, de police departments, fire departments, all EMTs, first responders. Um, bless all those who serve us in any way, keeping them safe in all that you have given uh, them to do, opening the ears of all who will hear to rejoice and to repent and firmly believe, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Giver of all good gifts, look upon the households of your people. Provide companionship for those who are alone. Strengthen the bonds of marriage and equip parents to raise their children in love and faith. Grant that our homes may be places of joy, reasonableness, peace, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, you set the prisoners free. Remember those who are incarcerated justly. and Grant that they may, might repent of their sins, be freed from the clutches of sin, accept the consequences of their wrongdoing, and learn to live honestly and peacefully. Remember all those who are imprisoned unjustly. Restore their freedom according to your will and preserve them in your grace and the confidence that you know what is true and just. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son became flesh and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases and afflictions, demonstrating his power and giving us a foretaste of the resurrection on the last day. Have mercy on all those who are in need of deliverance, especially Nadine Petrovsky, Kristen, Courtney, um, <coughs> excuse me, Reagan, Elaine Trainer, Bill Berry, Heather Wopel, Marlon Dolores Doe, John Trader, Lake and Holeka, Glenn Runninghoff, Darren Trainer, Anselm Wimmer, Gloria Luby, and Alex Meyer. Heal them according to your good will and according to your good time. Bless the family of John and Julie Grove on the death of Julie's brother Larry Hoffman. Um, bless them and continue to comfort them in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who came that first time for the forgiveness of our sins that we might receive forgiveness and everlasting life. Bring, keep them in your ever protective arms and deliver them all from all the afflictions at the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, the Son of Man came eating and drinking with sinners, that he might proclaim the kingdom and welcome them by the forgiveness of sins. We pray your blessings be upon us through all things that he has done for us, uh, especially that he has given his body and shed his blood for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our song.
to have your attention for just a moment. We have two uh, reports or announcements that need to be made uh, today. Uh, Julie, you come forward, please. Uh, Sally, uh, you come and you, you'll follow. Uh, you just come right on up here and use the microphone if you would, please. Good morning, my name is Katie Groth and I'm the president of the St. Paul Youth for Christ group. Our group is uh, made up of over 30 students that have been very active this fall. We appreciate the support of the church and the congregation and just wanted to let you know what we've been up to. The National Youth Convention is scheduled for early July in Houston, Texas. We have 24 students and three chaperones signed up to attend. We are joining the youth groups from Battle Creek, Norfolk, and Madison and renting three buses to make the trip. Attending with these groups has lowered the cost of attendance. The cost for each student is around $1,100. In October, we held a haunted forest to help raise funds for the trip. We had over 600 people visit the forest with cars in the parking lot from eight different counties and three states. Thanks to all the parents and students that helped make the evening a great success. At our November meeting, we helped gather food for the orphan grain train. Over 1,000 pounds of food was donated. We had our December meeting last week and had a wonderful supper provided by Nancy Rupert, Jamie Kelp, and Holly Snodgrass. We each read verses from the Christmas story and then had a gift exchange. We are planning on several more fundraising events after the first of the year. Our current plans include an all-you-can-eat waffle and sausage breakfast and a junior high dance to name a few. Thank you for all your continued support. Don't get nervous, I won't speak long. I know I can. <laughs> um, uh, this is just too great. Oh, I'm so excited about the youth group being, uh, being resurrected. I don't know, I think they just kind of took a nap during COVID and everything, but these are my old preschoolers. Can you believe it? They were only two feet high then. And now they're working together to uh, be examples for the community and for you and me. Uh, to get off our duff and do some stuff. Okay, well, I'm gonna give you a chance. Um, Deb came and asked me what I thought about uh, uh, caroling, and I said, oh, wow, yeah, that'd be nice for you to do, get that organized. Well, it takes a lot more people than one or two, and there they are, a lot here. Um, you know, guys, uh, caroling is not just a way to stretch your vocal cords. It's a way to minister. And we have 18 people that want to be visited. We can't go into nursing homes, so we need to go to homes and do the old-fashioned stand in front of their house and shiver and sing. Um, those people can't come here regularly because of limitations or age, or um, I'm just too tired, and they need to be ministered to. And we need you guys to help us out. Um, on Sunday the 19th, we're going to meet at the church basement, is it three? You know, I'm bad with times, three o'clock. And um, we're gonna get a little jazzed about it. And then we're gonna take off, and I hope, my prayer is, that we can split and go to all nine homes, each of our groups, and uh, sing. Or else we'll all go together and sing till 10 o'clock at night. But anyway, I also want to tell you, if you have somebody that you care about, or you love, or that has vocalized that they would sure like to be rejoicing at Christmas time, uh, do let us know and we can see if we can add them to our our list and stop by and sing. Now, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, moms and dads, we love to have you come. We want you there. But there's something about the sparkly eyes of a bunch of ordinary kids seeing God's graces and praises that brings extra joy to their hearts. So if you can grab a neighborhood kid, or you know, somebody that's just hanging around the streets, don't know what to do, bring them along. But do come and um, 
We are so excited about this. I want the basement just full. We are going to have soup, or we're going to try to have soup. And somebody mentioned leftover cookies. I don't know where that comes from. And uh, we just want to have a good time. Our congregation is coming back to life. And it's only if we get off our duff and do some stuff. Gosh, I just thought that up today. Thank you, Katie, for being here. Anyway, so let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we are asking that you send an extra measure of the Holy Spirit into each of our hearts and help us get out of ourselves and into your kingdom work. We have a small job to do, a big mission. Help us to know to take time, give a little time, a little energy, and make somebody's Christmas what it should be, rejoicing at the birth of you and the looking forward to time in heaven, the second coming. Be with us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.